A major development in two cold cases in Las Vegas from the 1990s. Police now say the same man is responsible for killing two women. On December 11th, 1992, the body of 31-year-old Laurieann Pereira was discovered at the 2800 block of East Charleston Boulevard in Las Vegas by a man walking his dog in the early hours of the morning. This senseless crime shocked the residents of the area who could not comprehend why such an act could have occurred. Little did they know, this would not be the last act of violence to take place there. A little over a year later, on January the 11th, 1994, just 1 1.9 miles from where Lori's body was discovered, a garbage man was cleaning a dumpster on the 4400 block of East Charleston Boulevard when under a layer of debris, he discovered another body, this time of 35-year-old Pearl Wilson Ingram. Who could have killed these innocent women? And were these gruesome murders connected? Welcome back to Mysterious 7, where we shed light on under-the-radar cases across the globe. Today, we'll be looking at the 30-year-old case of two murders that were finally solved. Let's dive right into the mystery without any further ado. Our case today takes us to Sin City, better known as Las Vegas county seat of Clark County in the state of Nevada. The 25th most populous city in the U.S., Las Vegas is an internationally renowned major resort city known primarily for its casinos, shopping, fine dining, entertainment, and nightlife. In the heart of the Mojave Desert, it stands out as a city best known for the good times it can provide. Sadly, these types of places also tend to attract criminals. Lorianne Pereira was born in 1961. Not much is known about her personal history, but from a statement released by her eldest daughter recently, a few details can be discerned. She was not an only child and grew up with an unspecified number of siblings. She also had three daughters, the oldest being Desiree Copping. She was a wonderful mother who did her best to provide for her daughters, as their father was never in the picture. But sadly, she was unable to earn enough to take care of all of her children, which is why she put her youngest daughter up for adoption. She felt that she would have a better life away from her. She was widely acknowledged as a loving daughter, mother, sister, niece, cousin, and friend who was beloved by all who knew her. In 1992, she was living in Las Vegas in East Charlestown with her two older daughters. And though she did not know it, just a few miles away from her and her daughters lived another single mother, Pearl Ingram. Pearl Wilson Ingram was born in 1959 in the state of Nevada. She was the fifth child of eight siblings. The names of her siblings and parents were unavailable, except for the youngest sister, who was named Teresa. Pearl grew up in a huge, loving family, surrounded by her brothers and sisters, and had a happy childhood. Her sister remembers her as lively and carefree, always cracking jokes and looking at the joy life has to offer. She had a son later on in life and raised him as a single parent as the father did not wish to be involved in the child's life. She was a hardworking and caring mother who did her best to provide for her child to the best of her ability. In 1994, she was living and working in Las Vegas with her son. December 11th, 1992 was a regular Friday morning in Las Vegas. As the city began to wake up in the early hours of the morning, a man took his dog for a walk like he did every day near the East Charleston Boulevard. As he entered a deserted area east of the Montgomery Ward's retail store, located at the 2800 block, as he went closer, he was horrified to see that it was indeed the body of a woman who'd been stripped of her clothes and was lying there lifeless. He immediately called the police who arrived soon after. When detectives from the Las Vegas Metro Police Department LVMPD arrived. They examined the body in the crime scene. They later identified the body to be that of Lorianne Pereira, who lived in the area. On examining her body, they found that both her ankles and wrists had been bound, as there were clear ligature marks on both. Her head had been struck with a blunt object. There was also evidence that tape had been put over her mouth. The body was then sent for full autopsy to the Clark County Medical Examiner. Her cause of death was ruled to be asphyxia caused by manual strangulation as well as blunt force trauma to the head. There was also evidence that she'd been sexually assaulted prior to her death. The manner of death was ruled a homicide after the autopsy. 
Investigators theorized the murder was likely motivated by the sexual assault. The police conducted interviews of her friends and family, as well as known sexual offenders in the area. Unfortunately, these interviews did not provide them with any new leads to follow. After exhausting all avenues of investigation that were available to them at the time and finding no possible suspects, the case eventually went cold. A little over a year passed after Lori's murder and life seemed to return to normal in East Charleston. But on the morning of January the 11th, 1994, tragedy struck again. An employee of Silver State Disposal, who was on his normal trash collection route, was cleaning out the dumpster behind the Vaughn's grocery store located at the 4400 block on East Charleston Boulevard. As he collected the trash, he realized that there was something under all the debris. When he looked closer, he was horrified to see the body of a woman. He informed the police immediately, and they arrived soon after. When the detectives from the LVMPD arrived on the scene, they examined the body and identified it to be that of Pearl Wilson Ingram. They found that she was naked from the waist down, and had been covered by debris in the dumpster in an effort to conceal the body. The body was sent for full autopsy to the Clark County Medical Examiner. After the autopsy, Pearl's cause of death was ruled to be manual strangulation. They also found that several of her teeth were missing, and she had abrasions on her face, on the bridge of her nose, and above her eyes, indicating that she had likely tried to fight back against her attacker and had been hit in the face. They also found that she'd been sexually assaulted prior to her death and speculated that, as in the Lori Pereira case, this was the likely motive behind the killing. The initial investigation was led by Lieutenant Greg Jolly. Detectives conducted interviews with people who knew Pearl, but did not find any possible suspects. Eventually, with a lack of leads to follow, this case also went cold. During the investigations of both cases in the 90s, the similarities between the two murders went unnoticed. Detectives never suspected that both individuals may have been killed by the same person. Over the past three decades, numerous LVMPD detectives examined these two cases in an effort to uncover fresh evidence. In March 2007, homicide detectives reviewed the evidence from the 1992 murder of Lori Pereira. In a swab taken during the original autopsy, they found a sperm fraction and requested further DNA analysis on it. A DNA profile with an unknown origin was identified and it was entered into the combined DNA index system, CODIS. There were no matches within the system to the DNA profile. Then, five years later, in July 2012, during a cold case review of the 1994 murder of Pearl Ingram, detectives found a skin swab that had been taken during the initial investigation. When they requested additional analysis on it, they were able to extract a DNA profile from it. When this profile was entered into CODIS, it was then that they discovered a match with the profile that had been developed from the 1992 murder of Lori Pereira, confirming that both murders were committed by the same person. This was a huge breakthrough at the time, as it connected these two cases which, until this time, had not been linked. However, at the time, detectives had no way of finding out who this profile belonged to, so the case once again went cold. Then, just last year, in June 2022, the LVMPD cold case unit requested a genealogical investigation into the DNA profile they developed from the two autopsies. Genetic genealogy creates family history profiles by using DNA test results in combination with traditional genealogical methods. It can be used to find the closest relatives to individuals whose DNA profiles cannot be identified because they're not in the system. The genealogical investigation for this case was conducted by Othram Labs. Based on research from Othram's in-house genetic genealogy team, a preliminary suspect was identified as Eddie George Snowden Jr. Detectives then contacted family members of Snowden's to obtain their DNA to test against the profile they developed. The details regarding the exact family members they contacted were not disclosed, but after testing their DNA against the DNA profile they had, they were able to confirm that Eddie George Snowden Jr. was, in fact, the killer in both cases. When they looked into his history, they found that he was born in 1937 and was in his 50s at the time the murders were committed. Record checks also revealed that Snowden had listed his address in the 2800 block of East Charleston, Las Vegas, 
only a block away from where Laurie's body was found and two miles away from where Pearl's body was found. No connections could be found between him and his two victims, and it seemed he did not know them, but likely targeted them because they were alone when he spotted them. Police also looked at Snowden's history and found that he had lived in a number of places including Sacramento, Santa Cruz, Madeira, Merced, Woodland, and Watsonville between 1956 and 1979. They encouraged detectives in all these areas to look at their cold cases files in case Snowden was a culprit in any of the crimes committed there as well. Sadly, justice could not be served as Snowden himself had passed away in February 2017 of natural causes at the age of 80. After 30 years, finally the families of Laurie and Pearl were able to get some form of closure, as the despicable individual who had taken their loved ones from them was identified. Even though justice could not be served to him, his identification will hopefully have brought some peace to their loved ones. Laurie's family was not available for comment after the case was solved. But her eldest daughter, Desiree, sent a letter to the LVMPD thanking them for their dedication to the case and for finally solving it. She also informed them that she'd been able to find her long-lost youngest sister, whom Lori had given up for adoption just weeks before the murder was solved. She stated that she knew Lori had been the guardian angel who helped her find her sister. At a press conference that was held to announce the solving of the two cases, Pearl's sister, Teresa Board, made a statement to the press in which she thanked the tireless efforts of the LVMPD detectives who'd managed to solve the case after all this time. She also thanked the family members of Snowden who had provided their DNA, which allowed him to be identified as the killer. Finally, in a message to other people like herself, she said, If there are any other families going through what we have been through, keep hope alive, keep God first, and you too can have closure. And there we have it, folks, the tale of how two cold cases were finally solved after three decades. These cases serve as an example of how modern forensic technology can be used to provide breakthroughs where hope was lost. But what do you think of the cases? Are you impressed by the manner in which they were solved? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time. Stay safe and thanks for watching.